Hey guys, we're back for another chapter of Mega Bat and Can Fancy Cat. We'll be doing chapter three, a fancy splat. And as you remember in our last chapter, um, Mega Bat licked Priscilla, the new family cat, and Daniel wanted to spend some time with Priscilla and so kind of sent Mega Bat outside. We're going to see how that ends up playing with how Mega Bat is feeling. Chapter three is called A Fancy Splat. All afternoon and well into the evening, Megabat fumed about the cat who'd ruined Christmas. Ooh, fumed. That's a really good word. We were talking about synonyms before. How is he feeling? Is he happy or is he mad? He's mad. So fumed is a synonym for mad. He was very angry. He was fuming. Hers was so rude, he told Bird Girl. The pigeon who was working on an art project that involved a big pile of pine cones, looked up. First thing of all, Hearst didn't even say hello or nicely to meet you, he began, listing the insults on his left wingtip. Nextly, Hearst broken the decorations on the dead tree. And finals, Hearst ruined the whole of Christmas. Bird Girl gave a sympathetic whoo but it didn't make Megabat feel much better. He stared out of the tiny shed window, hunched his wings up, and grumbled at the imagined wonderful Christmas going inside the house without him. Megabat was still mad the next morning when Daniel came out to get him. Priscilla won't eat her kibble, so Mom went to go get her some organic cat food in case she likes that better, Daniel said. Mom will be gone at least an hour. We can paint the steam engine now if you want. Megabat had intended to tell Daniel to go play with his cat instead, since he seemed to like her so much. But at the sound of the words steam engine, his ears perked up. Finally, finally, he said, coming to hang from Daniel's outstretched finger. But only for shortish time. Mine's got a very busy day. Doing what? Daniel looked around the shed. Helping Bird Girl with her projects. The bat motioned towards Bird Girl's pine cones. What is she making? In truth, Megabat hadn't bothered to ask yet, but when he flew over to give his beloved a goodbye peck on the cheek, he gasped in fright. Let me hear a gasp. <gasps> then he grinned. Ah, giant pretend puffer rat. Back when Megabat had lived on the papaya farm in Borneo, the farmer had put large dolls between the rows of fruit trees. The job of these saggy people was to scare away the birds, which was how Meg Megabat knew what Bird Girl had in mind. Hers will be putting them in the yard, he said, showing the fearsome decoys to Daniel. They were made from pine cones, rocks, acorns, twigs, and various things from the recycling bin. Bird Girl was always crafty, but this time she'd outdone herself. These will scare the real puffer rats away from stealing her seeds. Bird Girl, yours is a genius. Ooh, Bird Girl said modestly. Daniel, Megabat, and Bird Girl worked together to move the scary pinecone statues into the yard. Then Daniel and Megabat went inside. Megabat was glad to see that Daniel had already brought the model steam engine and paints to the table. But instead of sitting down to start, his friend crouched near the buffet table. Priscilla's been under here all morning, he explained. Here, kitty, kitty, Daniel called softly. The cat did not emerge. Emerge means to come out. So Daniel lay on his stomach to get a better look. I guess she's still not too sure about us, but Mom says she'll probably come around in a day or two. Megabat could not understand why Daniel liked the cat when she was no fun and all she ever did was hide. But he didn't want to get in trouble again, so he didn't say so. Instead, he got busy opening the little pots of paint. There were all the colors of the rainbow, plus a tiny pot of shimmering gold. Did you see how blue her eyes are? Daniel commented, not getting up to help Megabat, even though the lid of the orange paint was stuck. Instead, he opened a bag of cat treats and shook one into his hand. You don't get that with just any cat. 
It's because she's so fancy and purebred. Huh? How goes it? Megabat muttered. He turned the little pot around, looking for a pull tab or something. But Daniel mistook his question for interest in the cat. It doesn't she mean she's made of bread or anything, he explained, holding out the treat. Purebred means both, her of her, both of her parents were the same breed of cat. Chocolate seal point Burmans with beautiful markings on their faces and pure white paws, just like hers. Megabat abandoned the paint pot and shuffled to the edge of the table, just in time to see the cat poke her nose out from beneath the buffet to smell the treat, then catch sight of Daniel and disappear again. Megabat straightened his back and ruffled his wings importantly. Interestingly, mine is being purebred also, he muttered. No, you're not, Daniel laughed. That hurt Megabat's feelings. Mine is, he insisted. Both Megabat's parents were Batses. Where's your certificate then? Daniel asked. Priscilla came with a certificate from a breeder. Mrs. Cormier showed it to Mom. It has a gold seal on it and everything. Megabat didn't have a certificate or a gold seal or even know exactly what those things were. He gave a little huff and busied himself with the paint pots again. After getting orange open, he managed to do green, blue, and purple without much trouble. When he was done, he pushed the steam engine into the center of the table and cleared his throat <clears throat> to let Daniel know it was time to begin. W one sec, okay? Daniel said over his shoulder. I'm just going to go open some canned tuna. Maybe that'll get her to come out. Cats love tuna. Daniel dropped the cat tree he'd been holding on the floor and left the rest of the bag on the table. He disappeared into the kitchen. Megabat loved treats. So he teetered over and sounded out the words on the side of the bag. <sighs> Ish. Bit. Ease. He tilted the package, sniffed, then <sniffs> gab. The small brown lumps inside looked like beetle poop, but smelled worse. He could not imagine anybody wanting to eat that. But just then, Priscilla's whiskers poked out, followed by her whole head. She glanced both ways to make sure no one was around, then her nose began to dance. As she crouched low and inched across the floor towards the treat Daniel had left behind. When she reached it, she crunched the lump hungrily, and as she ate, Megabat studied her from above. Sure, the cat was soft, but she was kind of lumpy in places, especially around the back, and he couldn't understand the big deal about the markings Daniel had talked about. They were just brown smudges. That is what gave him the idea. Working quietly, so as to surprise Daniel, Megabat picked up a brush and dipped it into the pot of red paint. He made a big arc across his furry stomach, then added a swipe of orange, followed by purple, green, and blue. I wonder what he's doing an arc. An arc is kind of a shape like this. So we did red, orange, purple, green, blue. What do you think he's doing? He kept doing it until a nightmare of rainbow stood out brightly against his black fur. He definitely looked fancy now, but something was missing. Stars. Nothing was fancier than gold stars. Megad Bat dipped one talon and then the other into the little pot of gold paint and pressed them all over his wings to make sparkling patches. He added one last star on his nose, <laughs> the biggest and brightest one of all. Ta-da! He sang out, but Daniel was still in the kitchen. Just a sec, his friend called back. Almost done. Meanwhile, the startled cat burrows on the spot. She looked up at Megabat. Her muscles tensed. Her eyes grew as round and shiny as marbles. As round and shiny as marbles. Do you remember we talked about similes? That's a simile. Her eyes are not actually marbles, but they're comparing them to marbles. 
What does yours be wanting? Megabat asked. But of course, the cat didn't give him a straight answer. She just kept staring. Suddenly, it was obvious. Now that he was so beautifully decorated, the brown splotched cat was sad that she wasn't the fanciest animal in the house anymore. Well, that was hardly his fault. Yes, yes, Megabat strutted to the edge of the table. Megabat is gorgeous and yours is just regulars. As if confirming how badly she wanted to be pretty like him, Priscilla looked up at the table and gave a soft, plaintive, Megabat sighed. He couldn't help it. He felt a little bit bad for her. Okay, hey, fine. Mines will be giving yours one decoration. Is this a good idea? He picked up the blue paint pot and went to drizzle a splotch onto her tail, but the cat dodged him. Perhaps she didn't understand that staying still was an important part of getting painted. Aha, Megabat said. Mine knows what will make yours stay non-moving. He held his breath against the stink and then pushed over the bag of cat treats that were sitting beside him. A big pile of treats fell to the floor, and at once the cat was hunched over eating. Then Megabat was able to get to work. Mostly blue. Next purple. Finally, a few bright dashes of yellow. The colors made the cat look like the peacock he'd seen with Daniel at the zoo once. A huge improvement. But instead of thanking him, as soon as Priscilla had finished her fish bites, she began to run around in frantic circles. Stopping that, Megabat shouted. Yours will be ruining the decorations before they be drying. What's going on? Daniel came back into the room. M Megabat, why is the cat blue? He made a grab for Priscilla, but she dashed right past him towards the safety of the buffet leaving paint marks behind. I prettied her while she eated stinky bites, Megabat explained, and looking, ta-da! He stuck out his tummy and unfurled his wings to give Daniel a the full night sky effect. But instead of marveling at the twinkliness of the stars, admiring the cheerfulness of the rainbow, and saying how gorgeous and clever Megabat was, Daniel gasped. <gasps> Megabat, he said, what were you thinking? And that's the end of the chapter. The next chapter is called The Plan. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling there might be a problem here. There might be a problem here. What do you think they're going to do to solve this? We'll have to find out in the next chapter. Thanks, guys. Bye.